No problem. Cool. Oh, um, uh, Mike. Oh, where did we go? I Can you see you. you? We will begin. I can see you. <laughs> might... Wait, something I happens to like whoever's talking. Oh, it jumps to whoever's talking? Yes. You can change that. You can change it to show everybody. Pink. All right. I got you guys. You got us? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to hit start. All right, we are live. Ooh. <laughs> I know. It's hilarious. Every single webinar that I have been on to host like this or be the speaker, the whole queue is like, oh, we're just talk because people don't like to walk into a silent room. They think everybody's talking about them. And then we're joking like crazy. And all of a sudden it's like, hey, we're live. <laughs> like, I don't know what I was and doing a minute ago. We're just going to tell. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh my first goodness. world problems, yeah. <laughs> Webinar That's etiquette. Right, gosh. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Yep. Uh, actually, you know what? I was, I was talking to a, a, a doctor today, uh, Michael, and we were going over the um, Alice Night One tests. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm so used to interpreting or going over the watch pad tests, but the Alice Knight ones were really nice. And I love the hypnograph and how you line everything up. And so I was teaching the dentist how to talk to a patient about it. And, and it was so nice and easy. I, you know, was sharing my screen and showing her how everything lines up and she loved it. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I really liked it. I love the timestamp. Because not all reports give you that. I mean, a lot of reports, a lot of units give you good data. But on that one, it's, I don't know, did you do the paper sliding thing or how did you do the So the this, it stamp? was, um, we did it over Zoom. So okay. what I did was, what I had done was I downloaded it and then I uh, had drawn on it, like mm. I would with a pen and kind of like, just like, you know, side to, you know, just kind of connected everything and also connected it to the position. So, you know, the events were worse and um, when they're supine, but you could see the whole follow through into the positioning graph as well. So it was really cool. Got it. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Completely unrelated to our topic tonight, but that oh, is still, absolutely. Uh, yeah. I love, uh, <laughs> I love hearing good feedback. Um, all right. Well, everybody, uh, so we are live. So I'll welcome you all who are here. Um, we're going to wait probably one more minute uh, to let everybody get in, but I'll give everyone the uh, the very important CE information for what we're doing tonight, uh, so that way everybody has it. Um, you all are here attending fee-for-service versus medical billing, uh, so you get to see these lovely ladies here, who I'll introduce in a moment, duke it out on this topic. Um, no, we're going to have fun with you tonight. We want to be as educational as possible while having the most amount of fun possible. So here's your disclaimers. Uh, Awaken to Sleep is a for-profit company offering this free CE to you along with Somnomed. Uh, they are a sponsor for tonight. We've got Dr. Mona Patel, who is a sleep coach and speaker. We've got Lisa Crawford, who is the CEO and co-owner of a sleep practice. Um, we're going to have some fun talking about medical billing if that can be fun. I think it's gonna be entertaining tonight. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're gonna go through that. Uh, if you decide to stay on with us the whole time, um, please click your CE link so you get credit for it. If you decide to hop on and fake it and not hang around, good luck answering those four questions that'll take you 17 seconds to get that CE certificate. We're here for you. If you wanna have fun and hang out and learn some stuff, uh, we'd love to hang. Um, we are going to be talking at you tonight because we can't hear you. Uh, so Molly, to answer that first question in the chat, thank you for asking that. You do not have to mute. We cannot see any of you. You could be in your pajamas or worse, we would have no idea. Uh, just don't make that mistake on a Zoom video call because that's not this. So anyway, um, we're good on the CE stuff. We are here for you. Uh, without further ado, let me introduce Dr. Mona Patel first. Um, Mona has been practicing dentistry for 
a wee bit, um, 30 years, uh, TMD for 10 and sleep for four. Uh, she recently sold her general dentistry practice and is doing solo sleep. And uh, <laughs> her words, Mona, can I quote you? Sure. Homeless <laughs> sleep because <laughs> um, you're moving states. Yeah, I move states. So, you know, I can practice in 23 different states, except Florida. And we pick Florida to move to, which I love. I love my palm trees <laughs> and everything about here. Um, just, I have to go back to license and then, you know, want to pick up the sleep part again, because it's such a life changer um, for people. It's, you know, my, my favorite thing to do. Yep. Cool. So we're going to hear more from you uh, in a little bit. We've also got Lisa Crawford, uh, co-owner of Go to Sleep Centers, multiple centers. What is it, three now? Yes, we just uh, opened our third location in Mesa. This will be our third week there. So wow. rock and rolling. <laughs> so yeah, if you guys think that yeah. doing dental sleep medicine and medical billing gives you a headache, just try three of those practices and uh, you'd be Lucy out. Um, no, she's, uh, she's been um, in dentistry for 25 years, uh, owner, founder of GoGo -Go Billing for 13. And uh, as I shared, I uh, go to sleep centers, DSM only practices uh, with Dr. Stacy. I can never remember which one is her last name. Layman, Stacy Layman. <laughs> Facebook messes me up, man. Anyway, um, yeah, so, uh, and uh, I'm Michael Cohen. Uh, you all have seen me plenty of times. I'm guessing if this is your first time with us, uh, I'm the guy that had the pleasure of starting Awaken to Sleep a long time ago. Um, so, yeah, I'm here to serve you guys. A uh, couple of uh, quick facts. If you have questions, we hope you have questions because that's why you're here. We have some to start out this uh, madness, but we'd love to hear from you because we're here for you. Please put them in the Q&A. Questions go in the Q&A box in Zoom. You can separate those out uh, from the normal chat. If we ask you questions, please answer them in the chat or if you have any technical issues, uh, that's where we're gonna help answer you there. So if you have questions, throw them in the Q&A, please. Uh, we've got some to kick us off tonight based on uh, popular request for those that registered. So do we lose Mona? <laughs> nope, you're there and on mute. I get click happy, guys. I click, click, click. And then I get myself into trouble. <laughs> like I just introduced you, you can't this. leave yet. <laughs> You're not supposed to throw in the white towel for 10 minutes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Your AirPods are dead, Alicia, I see. Okay, so um, let's- Told you, let's... she's going down, sorry. <laughs> she's going down now she's, she's going down <laughs> so i'm gonna i'm gonna stop the share since we're gonna do a lot more dialogue tonight uh that way everyone can uh maybe minimize my face and see your lovely faces tonight um but yeah let's 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 kick it off with a good one um lisa i'm gonna ask you first you can hear me though right yes <laughs> yes uh pros and cons of a fee-for-service model in a dental practice providing treatment all right. And then Mona, I want you to follow up if you don't mind. No, absolutely. All right. So pros and, pros and cons, um, you know, the, the pros for a fee for service is you're going to set your fee and nobody's going to tell you how much you're, you're going to make. So you're not going to be, you know, working for peanuts or charity. You're going to have your fee, you're going to set it and it's going to be reasonable. Um, so that's definitely a pro. Um you know, cons, you know, let's face it, people like to, you know, to be seen for free or for little to nothing or have their insurance pick up. So case presentation acceptance uh, can be more difficult uh, if you're not taking insurance or helping them with insurance. So, uh, you know, again, Mona's gonna jump on here and, and uh, I, I certainly would never say that you can't do it because if you have really great skills with your case presentation um, and based on your patient base, you can be very successful um, without it. So, um, you know, again, pros, 
you you know what you can expect you know you're in network things can be a little bit easier as far as getting approvals and, and going you know without uh you know going through the whole system with the insurance especially when you're network um fee for service you don't have to do any of that uh you can get your patient in right away you can get started nobody's gonna tell you they have to go see this person first that person so getting them through the system they get a fast pass you know you you get to take care of them and, and, and be in charge of things so that's a huge plus in that fee for service um side so mona what do you think Wait, let me just get off Twitter. I was going to take you down on Twitter. I was going oh, to be trolled. I'm not even on Twitter. <laughs> no. I wouldn't even know. <laughs> I wouldn't even know. I love that. No, no, I know. This is so, you know, when I started off, every single course I went to, um, they really focused on medical billing, but you have to have the right partner in medical billing. And so I went through a couple of companies, and, you know, it's really interesting. They don't give you um, really concise information. So you're lost, right? And that was what was happening to us. And what I found was my case acceptance was going down. And hold on a minute, I did TMD, I did full mouth rehabs, um, you know, implant cases, and my average treatment plan could be $20,000, right? And suddenly they're not accepting my $3,500 fee of a sleep appliance. So what happened? And it was, I was really super curious about it. And what I realized was that for, it depends on your patient pool, depends on the type of practice. And if you're talking about getting patients from your practice, right? Not outside referrals, but from your practice and you know making a financial arrangement with them. If they're trained um, to accept dentistry, that's above the, you know, what is it? The maximum, oh my God, I'm like eight weeks out of, out of the office and I forget, maximum coverage. Like, you know, it's $1,500 or $2,000, whatever, but they're still accepting treatment that's 5,000, 10,000, 12,000, right? Mm -hmm. What was the difference? And the difference was that when we started doing sleep in my office, we were following all the things that we learned about collecting insurance information and driver's license. And so we actually put the focus on the medical and not the educational part of the, for the patient to teach them, you know, what the actual problem was and what we could do to help them. So the pros of fee for service is that your financial arrangements become super easy. You know, it's like talking about dentistry. It's nothing different for your financial coordinator to do. Um, the, uh, it's less work for the team. So your team loves you and they don't get uncomfortable. Every time a sleep patient comes up, they actually are like, oh my gosh, yes, this is great. We're going to help you. And this is how much it's going to be. And how would you like to pay for it? And we have options, right? But when we were doing it with, um, medical billing, the team I had were so fearful of making a mistake with medical because, and I think this came from me. I gotten everyone so worried about like making a wrong step and you know doing something wrong and then being put into jail by the medical insurance mm. I know right <laughs> yes, exactly I'm like oh my god no 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 we can't make a mistake right so that part um of is is such a pro the disadvantage is that if you are really hoping to get busy quickly from outside referrals that's really tough because if you're not in a medical um, network or participating with Medicare or anything, it's one of the first things the physicians ask you. So it really depends on when you're, where you're trying to draw your initial experience from and what type of patient pool you have. So, yeah. 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 So I'm going to, um, I have a feeling that you all know so much on your respective topics that my job tonight is going to be translation for the rest of us. So I'm going to do my best um, for everybody that's on here. I, I pulled out two huge nuggets from what the two of them just said. One, it very much depends on the type of dental practice that you're in. If you're a GP office that is in a highly insurance driven Medicaid low income area, good luck selling a fee for service case for anything, including sleep. If you have a mix of PPO dentistry and fee-for-service and you're selling implants and you're doing things, 
like that, implants, ortho cases, elective things that are above that max coverage, then you've got some opportunities to pick what do you want to do, and it's based on your staff. So a lot of that is going to be staff workflow. It's team driven, and one requires more sales skills. So if you're going to sell a fee for service case, you're going to know how to sell it. And selling isn't a four letter. Wait, it is a four letter word. Just kidding. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> no, <ing>. Sell. Sell. <laughs> no. But seriously, guys, it, it is it is not that hard. If you're already convincing people to spend that much money on something else, and this is has the potential to save their life and definitely impact the way they feel for the overall life, it's just a communication barrier. So those are the two things. What kind of practice are you in? Know who you are, know where you practice, know who your people are, and then what are you trying to achieve? So that's, ladies, did I get that right? Wrong? No, okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Because I, right. I think I think that if your goal is to go all the ways to sleep, then you you know you want to go hands in hands with um, you know medical and work with a great medical billing company and be able to you know have a process in place. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, for sure. Good, cool. So I don't, uh, I don't see a trove of questions coming in. So reminder, uh, we can answer our own questions all night long based on the ones that we got earlier. But if you've got burning questions that pop up, throw them in the Q and A, please. Okay, um, I'll hop into the next one. Um, let's do the same thing, um, a, a bit abbreviated because we hit a couple of points already. But let's do the pro con assessment for medical billing in the practice. So we did fee for service benefits and not, but this kind of goes hand in hand. If you pick doing medical insurance, how does that benefit you? Well, Lisa. I'll start on this one. Okay. So, you know, to kind of taking from, from what Mona was saying and the struggles that she has, um, these are struggles that we all have and, and we all went through this and, you know, Stacy and I starting sleep, like I said, 13 years ago, uh, there wasn't a medical billing company to help you with. So, you know, here I am, world's worst assistant, but, you know, world's best office manager, <laughs> trying to figure out, you know, how, how to handle this. Um, and it was completely foreign to me and there was no help at the time. And that's when we decided, once we did figure, figure it out, that we were going to start GoGo Billing. And over the years, you know, we've improved our processes, we've improved our training, we've, we've improved and, and, and gotten better as, you know, this target has moved. Um, so if you're going to do medical billing, uh, you need help and your team needs help and you have to have the right team that is willing to do it. And, you know, if they if they're just scared of it, they're shy. They don't want to deal with it. They're not the right person. Um, you need to either find somebody new who has medical experience, somebody who's worked in a medical office that's used to getting pre authorizations and jumping through these medical hoops that just simply don't exist in dental. So finding the right team members and then getting them the help that they need. And, you know, shameless plug, you need a billing company. And, you know, whether it's us or, you know, I'll plug everybody else, you know, pristine, four pillars. There's, there's a lot of us out there now that, that, that do a great job. Um, and we have systems in place to really train your team to, to get it going. So uh, if you're going to do it, don't try to figure it out on your own. You're just setting yourself up for failure. Um, and you know, you have to follow the recipe um, to also kind of, you know, piggyback on, on Dr. Patel. Um, when you're doing your case presentation, you don't focus on the insurance. It's the last thing you talk about. So I, that's what I do in the office. That's, that's my, you know, that's what feeds my soul is connecting with patients. And I love that four letter word. I love lots of four letter words, but sell is like one of my favorite ones. <laughs> that's and the only approved four letter word for tonight. <laughs> FYI. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes, Bob. Um, I love selling because I love giving people what they want and what they need. So if I spend the time discussing, yeah. you know, again, how this is how this is affecting them their sleep apnea is affecting them how we have a solution for them how it works 
very little time spent on showing them the actual appliance. And then my, my keywords are, let's see if insurance is going to help us out. That's it. Exactly. You're it, brilliant. That's what we ended up doing. See? <laughs> yes. So you know what? What it really is, is that um, I have my way. Lisa, you have yours. But we actually are using the best of both. Like I combine it. So I always go fee-for-service model. And then it's like, how does, you know, let's see if insurance will cover anything. But then you, you then have a good um, company that you work with. And what I, I think from what I heard about your company is that because you guys are still working in the sleep office, you guys like are in it and you know all the changes and everything. So if you're with other companies who are, yeah, and they're great and I'm, you know, but maybe they just don't have a, a, a bird's eye view of what the process is, it can be misleading and you may not get all the information that you need. But yeah, it, it, I love it. You're brilliant. <laughs> Such a okay, good so <laughs> it's a good thing we just said verses instead of you know other people like <laughs> fancy slug fest. Like you all are best friends. Like there's no like fighting. You feel the love. You feel Gosh. the love. I know. It's no. not a sitcom tonight, people. No, I know. I wish right, but the thing is that we have so many great things in dentistry and in the medical field mm -hmm. to help us save lives, right? And you know, we just put obstacles up for ourselves when we talk about, oh, is the patient gonna pay? Is the insurance gonna pay? You just you just have to do what you have to do. But um, I've, I met a lot of people who are like, no, I wanna bill myself. And I'm like, okay, call me when you have to find a new team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. It's so, so let me, difficult, let, yeah. Let me, ask, let me ask the audience a question real quick. Uh, for those of you that were kind enough to show up and are still on this call tonight, um, will you just raise your hands click the virtual raise hand button. And uh, if you guys have had, <laughs> if you have had issues with medical billing, I should have said the raise hand last. Three people are like, me. <laughs> <laughs> if you've had issues with medical billing and that's why you're here tonight, I wanna see who's here. <laughs> well, <Same> least, people. <laughs> I think you have your work cut out for you. It's like the whole list. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. <laughs> There's a lot of people. Can you count that high? <laughs> no, that was that was my limit. You caught me. <laughs> All right, Smarty. What is your advice? Oh, now now I'm getting a message from my team. It's over 25. Thank you very much, <laughs> team. Uh, All right, medical billing guru, Miss. I figured it out 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, before everybody else. Yeah. What's your general advice since you've walked the walk okay <laughs> Mona yeah. raised her hand by the way so uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm still having problems uh medical billing can I I can say a little bit of a bad word medical billing is a pain in the ass I mean it's it's not easy and um you you have to come to the realization that it's not fair it's extra work um but like Mona also said, and, and what we found to be extremely true, once we went through our existing patients, we rely on referrals. 100% we are, we are sleep only, so we are 100% referral only. And the biggest hurdle at the beginning is making sure your cases have all the, the necessary paperwork that you need. Um, you know, so you, you, you need to have your consultation before the sleep study you have to have your sleep study you have your, have your prescription so again working with a company that's going to give you the tools and the information you know and you can check the boxes uh, to make sure that you have everything and we're on your side right so the billing company is is you know we're not in the insurance side we're on your side so when you send in a case it's our job to look at it and say this looks great or we're missing this. This isn't pretty. Put some lipstick on it. You know, get a new Epworth. Tell them that they have to be really tired this time, uh, and and make sure that that paperwork looks good. So that's the first thing is just understanding what that paperwork looks like and having somebody help you get that put together. And then you know another thing that that Mona mentioned is 
you know, the staff didn't know, you know, we don't know how much they're going to pay. We don't, there's a formula for that, right? So the mm -hmm. answer is you have to have your set fee, right? So you're willing to work with insurances, you're willing to negotiate, but this is the bottom line. And so we're going to estimate your insurance is going to pay their 80% or their 50% mm -hmm. minus your deductible. And it's a mathematical formula. So again, if you, if you work with us mm -hmm. or, or, you know, if you work with somebody else, we all follow the same um, guidelines that, you know, your bottom line is, is your fee that you set. So always set those, um, you know, the, the math, it has to equal your fee. So if the insurance allows less than what than what you charge, then you are going to balance bill them up to that fee. So, you know, it shouldn't be a mystery. You should be able to give them that that uh, set amount that what they owe. Um, you know, that being said, if you are in network, so I don't mean to ramble, but there's going to be accepting insurance as out of network versus in network. So there's kind of two sides to that as well. I always suggest as a billing company, as a friend, as you know, a colleague, start out by being out of network. Don't sign up and you know, don't. See who's around you, try to be out of network and you can negotiate your fees um, and see if there is competition around you and they're, they're knocking you out, then okay, well, let's get in, you know, let's get in that network or let's look at the allowed amount and see if it's worth it. So there's no, in my opinion, there's no, like, if I'm going to accept insurance, I have to be on all the plans. I don't agree with that. I say, you know, become, start doing insurance and be out of network and yep. let's kind of get our, our toes dipped in the water and see what things look like. Yep. Um, and it's, you know, Stacy and I, we're yin and yang. You know, we, we do this a lot because she wants to get in all the networks and I'm always fighting. I'm always like, no, I don't want to get in that network. I don't want to accept that amount. <laughs> like, well, if we do a lot, I'm like, no. <laughs> so <laughs> we're constantly kind of going back and forth and then I'll give and we'll get in one. But what we're always doing is evaluating, okay, can I sell them out of network? And if we can, you know, if we can evaluate the numbers and go, wow, we had, we lost 50 patients and mm -hmm. we only got one because we're out of network and this guy down the street is in, let's get in. Yeah. So, um, so, we so do out, start out, move in is yeah. the direction. You have to, right? Yeah. If you have to. Um, I, I simply think you're signing yourself up um for a disaster if if you just jump in you've never built medical and you're going to try and get in network with all these plans don't do it yeah yep so um can you hit briefly because we've we're two questions and we're 25 minutes in okay. so briefly uh define the difference between in and out of network for ppo medical insurance yep. and medicare par non-par Briefly, oh. really? Okay. So, <laughs> the insurance is easy. You're the expert. <laughs> okay, I'll make it quick. So if you're in network, it's just like you're in network with your Delta Dental. You have to accept the allowed amounts. You're going to get the payment sent to you. And if you charge over the allowed amount, you have to write it off. So that's your that's your in network. Medicare is a little bit different because Medicare actually gives you a, a choice. So Medicare, you have to be signed up, right? If you want to treat Medicare patients and you want to bill Medicare, you have to be in the system. You have to, you know, write your name in blood, give your fingerprints, the whole bit. Um, and you're a Medicare provider. Now, once you're a Medicare provider, you can either be participating or non-participating. So that would be considered in-network would be participating, non-participating would be just like you're out of network. You can charge whatever you want. Um, you know, the, the kicker is that payment with Medicare, that payment is going to go to the patient when you are a Medicare non-participating provider. So how we handle that in my office is, you know, we have them pay, um, pay us and they get the check. So that's, that's yeah. it. but you get to realize those benefits. If you're participating, you get both checks, but 
get a little check. <laughs> yeah. So, um, George, uh, a common friend on our webinars, he's Chad's friend. I have yet to hang out with George a whole bunch, but he said PETA is pain in the, is a four letter word. It's PETA. PETA. Thank you, George. PETA. We Thanks appreciate you. Insurance is a PETA. It's um, PETA. So, uh, can we, let, let's hit this because um, there's a couple of different questions and I'm going to sum them up so we can get through it because everybody asks similar things. There's a new dental code coming out for sleep apnea. Um, is dental insurance going to pay because medical they're frustrated with it's ambiguous, all the stuff you just mentioned. So are you aware of the dental code about sleep apnea? Is dental insurance going to pay for that? Is there any hope on this planet, Luke Skywalker? I'm looking at my crystal ball. I don't know, Mona, are you in your crystal ball? Um, I, I am. Okay, yeah. we're looking at it. We're looking at it. All we can do is give you our, our, our best guess. And my guess is no, dental isn't gonna touch it with a 10 foot pole. And yeah. there's plenty of things in dentistry that have a code. Um, I was chicken little when this started. I was like, oh no, uh, but I got over that by the end of the day uh, because the code in dental still says that it requires medical necessity. And those plans do not have the infrastructure in place to go through and prove medical necessity. So I think that's, you know, cause in dental it's like, you know, deny pay, deny pay, oh, they're out of money. Um, so I don't think it's going to affect it at all. I, I think that medical is still, cause it's a, still a medical condition, right? The sleep apnea is, not a dental condition. So Mona, yeah. what do you think? I agree. I don't think that dental is going to cover it. I mean, half the time they don't really, bad, bad word, um, cover night guards and occlusal guards. <laughs> so, you know, um, I don't think that they're going to cover sleep appliances and dental. The, I think purely the code is there for tracking purposes. Yep. Because right now, if you're doing sleep, you have to make up that dummy code in your dental software to be able to track the treatment that you're doing. And so I think the ADA seeing uh, that there's so much sleep, you know, discussions now, dental sleep medicine, I think that that's the reasoning behind it. But I don't think that this, it's really going to be linked to dental coverage unless there's a major shift in insurance um, thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Which don't hold your breath. I'll put my non-expert spin on it, you know, just since you all asked me. Yes, um, tell us. Hey, you know what? The ADA comes out with codes that are within the dentist's scope of practice and the dental insurances find ways to not pay for them. This is no different. Yeah. And this is well within the dentist's scope of practice to treat. It doesn't mean that Delta is going to pay you. <laughs> there you go. Boom. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> This is why I never get to be on an expert panel. I just get to ask the questions. <laughs> They're all saying the same thing. So that's good. Just do your job, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, you know what? This is a great one. It ties, Lisa, it ties right into what you said. Um, but Mona, I'm going to ask you first, just to throw it off a little bit. So Lisa just said, when you're billing non-PAR Medicare, that means the, the out-of-network version of Medicare. So the check goes to the patient. Yes. And Lisa said, I get them to pay up front. Mona, you're doing this fee for service. Yes. So tell us how you get the patients to pay up front. What's the secret magicness? And then I want to hear from Licia too. Sure. So I mean, I think it's it's not one particular thing. It's how you are taking your patients up the educational ladder to understand what they have, what the problem is, what the solution is. Do they want to be helped? Risk versus benefit. So once we have all of that. The financial discussion is a little, it, you know, people like packages. So I package everything up. So I don't sell them an appliance. I sell them my comprehensive airway package, right? And it's all of the things together. And this is what it's going to cost because we, we, we care for you. This is therapy, airway therapy. And that's what we do. Um, and, you know, I actually present the fee for service. I collect the, um, the full amount at time of scheduling or my team does right or they may uh, make payment plans or finance you know financing options and um you know after that whole financial deal is done and the patient knows what they what they owe that's when my team actually says hey you know what 
let's see if we could get any medical coverage for you, right? And that's when we get the medical involved, but not until that time. Mm -hmm. And that's how we get our case acceptance done. Um, with Medicare being non-par, I think it's actually a good thing to be non-par in the sense that all these people who have Medicare have really great supplemental insurances as well. So when you do your um, non-participating part of it and you get a check and the balance, instead of billing it to the patient, just like secondary dental insurance, you can bill it to the supplemental and you really get your full fee helping your patients who have Medicare. Lisa is totally hating you right now because you just stole her entire secret answer. Oh, no, no, the no. The thunder just, just went no. over to Florida. Yeah. She's just, <laughs> no, she's just happy that a dentist actually got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yay. Yay. I listened to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, I, I totally agree when I, when I'm doing case presentation, um, I, I actually look at the questions we ask them, right? So we ask them about their sleep quality. We ask them about, you know, are they feeling unrefreshed in the morning? All, all those, those, those things that, you know, we, we need to obtain and engaging with them and saying, okay, you're having memory problems. Well, your memory is consolidated in your sleep. And so if we can, you know, get you sleeping uninterrupted, you know, that could improve your memory. Oh my gosh. So really connecting, you know, uh, Mona says educating. I'm a little bit more because uh, I'm not a real doctor, so <laughs> I have to go. <laughs> no, I know. I actually agree with you, Lisa. Alicia, it is actually. It, I say educating, but it's connecting, and it's exactly. connecting their. Yeah. It's connecting their pain points, like what's really bothering them and how we can help them. Right, because they're walking in the door and they're looking for a solution. And then if they, yeah. if if you can connect with them and they they can feel like you're listening to them they have these problems and sometimes they don't even know that these problems are connected right. and you know that's one of my favorite things when you see those light bulbs they go oh oh mm -hmm. oh oh mm -hmm. you know this is all involved mm -hmm. so you know it's so fun and when it comes down to the cost you know again if you believe in what you're doing and you know you're helping these patients you know, I sold cosmetic dentistry, right? right? Cash. And I knew that when they would finish with their treatment, they would be thrilled, right? So yeah. I, I feel the exact same way about sleep, even more so. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that, that fee for service, you know, that thunder that you stole from me. <laughs> it's okay. I'm going to get over it. <laughs> okay. So, so right. we get paid really well for Medicare. So somebody's right. Yeah. So <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know somebody could ding dong in a They're webinar. Ding -dong wow. a, how much do you get paid? We get paid a lot. <laughs> Teach us how to do it. <laughs> so um, where do you go learn how to do that? Where do, where do you, where do you send your team to go learn how to put the package together, connect with patients, that kind of thing? Well, for me, it's, it's training with me, but I, I like doing it so much. I don't let them do it. Um, I know since we're growing and we're getting bigger, I have to let go of those reins, but um, you know, you have to find somebody who cares, you know, that's it. And if they can sell cosmetics and they can, you know, they can sell anything that they believe in, as long as you educate them that what you're doing is, is uh, going to help the patients, they're going to be all on board. But I do, I do every once in a while. When I'm asked, I don't know, Michael, if you ever want to ask me or somebody wants to ask me, I do um, uh, case presentation. That's one of my favorite, you know, medical bill is boring and it, nobody <laughs> it, but I love doing, uh, you know, case presentation. So every once in a while you can catch me at a, at a seminar and I'll go over my full case presentation as well. Cool. Awesome. Mona. So where would I send my team members to learn? Um, so I'm such an expert at it. I teach them. No, I'm just kidding. So, well, no. the, the <laughs> is <awakened>, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. Uh, awaken to sleep. Hello. And the, yes. That and and again, you know, it's really it's hot. It's funny when you're when you're telling people how you learn these things, 
and you're going to, you know, go ahead and say, awaken to sleep, and they're giving this webinar. But truly, um, when, when you go through the two-day course with them and they work with your team and, and how to talk to the patient, just from the get-go, if anyone's new to dental sleep medicine, it's a little different conversation, right? And, and it doesn't have to be complicated. But they, you know, they can teach it simply and then to go through the financial. So if you want to train your team to be comfortable and not be uncomfortable having those conversations with patients, then I would say awaken to sleep. Um, if you, you know, um, uh, if you want to learn about medical billing and how Lisa, I mean, like, honestly, I would love to come, like, just shadow you at your office. Yeah. You know, I would love to. Um, just because there's so much that I, I'm sure that we can all learn from each other and how we're talking to patients, but all the multiple options we can give them, right? There's yeah. not, there's, there's just not one way to do things. Not, you know, not everything is, is wrong if you're doing it this way. There's so yeah. many ways. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. So I'll, I'll give the, we've got a discount for you guys that stay with us till the end. I'll pull the slides up when we're done doing the dialogue here. So we'll give you guys a discount off of in the course that's coming up here next. Um, so you guys can hang out for that. But I would say um, if you like this, then you would love that because we do more of this there. If you don't like this, but you still want to do medical billing or sleep, find a place that connects with your style of learning yeah. and teaches your team. You want to learn everything as the doctor? then you're going to do everything as the doctor. You're going to own every problem. You will be the solution for everybody's bad emotional day with sleep. Don't do that. Yeah. It's not that you can't, but you shouldn't. That's just, there we go. My opinion. And then we'll move on. <laughs> so do yeah. it somewhere that connects with your really learning wise. style and teach your team. That was very wise, Michael. It's true. If you do like, I, listen, 30 years of dentistry and I thought I had to do it all. And you do, you own all the problems, but sleep has to be team driven. It cannot, if you want it to be profitable in a general practice setting, it has to be team driven. If you want it to be profitable in a sleep only setting, it has to be team driven. There's no yeah. doubt. Yeah. I love that word profitable or profitable, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds so good. Um, we will take the rest of our time on the translation between British English and American English. That's right. But start using that. Just sounds <laughs> that's right. We, we got uh, a couple. I got a couple of questions from George, uh, okay. and I got to put him down real quick. No, George, we are not sending you Licia and Dr. Mona's contact information. Um, just kidding. Uh, yes, we will have a way for you to contact them afterwards. It will be in the email that contains your link. Uh, we will also have a quick. Can you schedule a call with a coach? That's coming up too. So. Uh, you can definitely do that. Um, and then he did have a legitimate question. Um, how long does your full case presentation take? Short answer, Mona, then Licia. Uh, I don't present. My sleep queen presents, and she probably has it done in 10 minutes. Wow. Yeah. I need to, I need to take your course. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wow. telling you, I literally, I go in, my team taught me very early on, the less I say, the better. Yes, right? yes, that was definitely, so Stacy and I, you know, she's not allowed talking at all. She right. is the doctor. She's not allowed talking about money. Okay. She wasn't allowed doing it in cosmetics and she's certainly not allowed doing it with this. Um, but I am a talker. I don't know if you guys could tell that or not. Um, <laughs> So my consults are anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour, depending on the patient. Um, but we give them that time and I have that time. As we are moving and changing, um, uh, you know, depending on the insurance and things like that, you know, I, I will have less time. So it, it's going to be really interesting to see. And I think we should, I talked about to uh, talk to Michael about this. I think we should have a follow-up because we're in the midst of a major transition because right now we are about 50-50 fee-for-service out of network and in network. So again, I draw a big line between the two. That being said, let me say one more thing. When you are in network, don't think 
that it means all the patients come in and don't have to pay anything. That is 100% not <laughs> Okay, deductible yeah. still exists. Yeah. Coinsurance still exists. So not only do you get to do all the crazy paperwork, sometimes you're still a cash patient because yep. your deductible in network is four thousand dollars, right? So that's a huge misconception. Um, so, uh, but as we as we're making this transition, we are even getting into Medicaid. Okay, so that's wow. that's a whole new ball of wax for us and I don't plan on spending an hour with a Medicaid patient because we won't won't have the time and we can't afford to do that and frankly I won't have to sell them you know it's free, yeah. it's free. they don't have to pay anything so um you know and uh I I hope we don't lose the magic that we have so that's kind of the struggle that that because we don't accept all the insurances and we get paid really well, we still get to treat them as if we're fee for yep. service. So we'll have a follow up, Michael, in maybe six months, and I'll say, "Don't ever do it." <laughs> <laughs> well, you took a good position because you're doing it, whether right. you want to or not. So right. if you if it sucks and you have to fix it, then yep. you're right, and you get to tell Stacy, "I told you so." Or mission, or mission. Yeah. Or, or, you know, if she was right, you guys are printing, a, not printing appliances. You're making appliances hand over fist. I'll, I'll, I'll eat the pie and cash the checks. It'll be fine. I yeah, won't, won't bingo. Win. Either way, we'll win. But uh, my consults can run up to an hour. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If, we're if we're talking about consults and initial and all of that stuff, absolutely. But when it comes to going over the home sleep test and connecting the dots and acceptance of treatment, 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. I know. I and I literally, know. I just, I literally go in and I just go, uh-huh, God bless you. Yes, this is the right thing. And I leave. <laughs> You're both incorrigible. It's a <laughs> short answer. And it was just like, bam, you mongo. Thank you both. <laughs> Seriously, people are going to hang me. We have so many questions. Okay, all right. We'll go super fast now. Don't make promises you can't keep. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to take this one and I will try to do it quick. Uh, Lori asks, so as a team member trying to get medical to pay for a sleep appliance, we have to bill, we have to use a medical billing company. No, you don't, Lori. You can absolutely submit a HICFA 1500 form with all of the 40, how many something boxes checked correctly, all the nonsense, you can do it. You can contact the insurance directly. There's nothing that prohibits that. What Lisa was saying to clarify is that, Lisa and Mona both said this, having a medical billing company who is your advocate, who knows what the heck they're doing, translates all of that nonsense and says, hey, we're missing two boxes on this 40 something box form. It's gonna prepare you for success. So if you guys have the bandwidth, you know, minimal financial upfront to get set up. But if you have the bandwidth to work with a medical billing company financially and the time to work with them and hand documents back and forth, it will save you a boatload of time, mental consternation and anguish later. Sure. Yep. Okay. So um, next question. Uh, why is it so hard to get senior advantage Medicare plans to pay you? Because they're an... <laughs> She just laughed. <laughs> the expert was like, eh. I'm going to go on mute now because I only have four letter words left. <laughs> it's an HMO. That's a three letter word. Yes. That's why it's an okay. HMO. So a Medicare Advantage, um, every state is different. Every advantage is different. Some of them will uh, process and pay if you're not a Medicare provider. Some will not. You have to have a P10 and it's up to that specific plan in that specific state to make that decision, whether they tell you ahead of time or not. I don't know. Uh, Medicare Advantage. Also, you have to follow all the same rules that you would with Medicare. So you have to have all that proper documentation. And um, it's not really an advantage, <laughs> especially when it's an HMO. Uh, you'd have to get what's called a gap or a network deficiency. And as the dental office or your billing company, typically they cannot request it. You have to have the primary care physician mm -hmm. request, you know, directly to the insurance company. So again, good luck making getting that HMO primary care physician to spend their time and money 
getting getting your approval through um or the patients themselves can request it sometimes which again is a, a whole other uh, ball of wax um and again they can get away with just saying nope you're not a medicare provider we're not paying uh and a lot of times too with those medicare advantage plans you have to accept their allowed amount it's you know it's still considered government funded even though it's not even though it's through a commercial plan they can get away with those EOBs saying you're not allowed to balance bill the patient. Yeah. Um, They're so, government funded. Yeah. So then they go, bam, sorry, we're not paying you. Yeah. Hey guys, no, let, let's just boil it down for the common people like over here, the non-experts, mm -hmm. multi-billion dollar companies get to create the rules of the game so that they make money when you don't. Yeah. yeah. Odds are not stacked in your favor. <laughs> no. Everyone. They're no. not. They're not. You can navigate it, obviously, because yeah. that's what we're talking about. But it's not a walk in the park, which, Lori, to your question, do you have to have somebody? No. Should you have somebody? Will it assist you with getting paid? Unequivocally, yes. Yeah. And can we still, you know, you could, you could send it to us and we can jump through all the hoops on your behalf and then still get away with not paying? Absolutely. Um, so... Again, that's where the fee for service ding, ding, ding wins this round because, mm -hmm. you know, you say you're not in network and you'll do your best or, you know, try it on your oh. own and, you know, you're, you're, you're home free. Yep. And mm -hmm. if anybody are you listening and you're coming close to your parents, like, I promise, Michael, I'm going to be better next time, but I just want to say this one thing. Don't sign up for a Medicare Advantage plan. Yeah. Stick to your your Medicare and your traditional supplemental. They're I actually have info on that. Oh. Uh, I helped look into this for my uh -huh. mother. Yes. No, you know. Yes. Okay. Oh my stinking gosh. What a ridiculous, learn a different world. <laughs> you think, you think, anyway, we don't have time for that. I'm, I'm going to be like you guys and go off. Yes. I'm going to boil it down. Let me tell you this one thing. If you have parents or you or anyone is trying to look at a Medicare Advantage plan, translate that in your brain. It's an HMO. It's called Medicare Part C. When you go to Medicare the first time, it's like group health care. You're automatically enrolled. They don't care about your health. They just take your stats and your demos. If you go into a Medicare Advantage plan, you can never go back to a Medicare Part B and supplemental plan unless you go through health underwriting. Good luck with that. Yeah. So. There you go. Words to the wise. That's a freebie that has nothing to do with your dental practice, but it does with your parents or yourself. Yeah. Uh, Alicia it. already answered the question. Is it normal to use a third party biller, have all the paperwork, everything's done and still not get paid by the medical insurance company? We've been struggling with insurance companies not paying anywhere close to our billed fee. The answer is yes. Yeah. Sometimes it's the quality of the billing company more often than and I'm not going to call it anybody's names. It just can happen because at times we can all get overwhelmed, right? Yeah. Separate from that, let's not put the blame on just the people submitting the documents. How about the, the company is trying hard not to pay you? Yeah. Plus that company is being the go-between, plus you have to get all the documentations, yeah. jump through all the hoops, and those global policies for each of those companies changes from time to time. So you're running into a lot of different, a lot of layers. So instead of placing blame, let's just figure out what makes sense for you. Yeah. If you guys are so stuck that this is, and I'm going to be a little bold here. If anyone is on this webinar tonight and you are so stuck with medical billing that you're not, you're considering quitting doing your sleep apnea program, please pause the medical billing and either immediately seek help for that. You can talk to Lisa, you can talk to one of our coaches, get help, or put a pause in the medical billing and do a couple of fee for service cases, get paid for the work that you're doing. Get some energy in your sleep program because there is no reason you should stop saving lives because insurance companies don't pay you. Right. I know that's bold and that's not necessarily why you came here, but preach it. Somebody needed to hear that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a whole 25 hands. I don't know. I mean, but there are definitely times where we'll get a, a we'll get a, a an office on board that has been struggling that say, you know we've been doing this for six months, we haven't gotten paid, we've been working with a billing company, we've been doing it on our own, you know, and we'll, we'll say, send them to us. And they're a mess. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus, but it's a mess. 
And, yep. you know, you don't have a sleep study, you don't have a prescription, and it could be a mess from either the office th themselves yeah. or the billing company. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I call it the you win some, you lose some. I'm, I also input the EOBs sometimes. And when I'm looking at them, sometimes I'm like, yeah, I got paid. This one's good. Like, <laughs> Ha, suck it, Stacy. You know, we're out of the network. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, 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 oh. we got yep. a gap. We, you know, it took us six months to get paid and we got $700. That one yep. goes, you lose some. Yeah. So, you know, it depends again how you're setting things up. If you're setting it up where you're, you're definitely telling the patient, you have to pay this amount regardless of what your insurance pays, then you balance bill them. Yeah. Right. If, if you don't do that, then you're going to win some, you're going to lose some, yep. and, uh, you know, to Michael's point, you know, some plans are just downright dirty. I mean, there's a blue cross blue shield that allows $96. <laughs> and when I heard that, I was like, Oh no, we'll get that fixed. Uh, uh it's been four years. We still haven't gotten it fixed. Like there's nothing yeah. to fix. They're like, no, nope, sorry. Yeah. And, and I word of encouragement to everybody after my, you know, sharp poking in the eye statement, if the expert who built a company on knowing how to do this still gets $700 checks or knows the $96 plans, yeah. you're going to find them too. Yeah. So give yourself a little grace and a little latitude to step back from the, oh my gosh, this nuts work. This isn't working. Maybe we should quit. Take a step back from that and just assess the landscape. Like what Mona said earlier, there's a lot of different ways to get to the same spot. At the end of the day, let's not forget that this is a topic about money, but we're really here to help people. And if helping people is our end goal and getting money from the patient or the insurance is secondary, let's not put the cart before the horse, right? So take, take that encouragement. Mona, do you have anything to say on that? You know, I was just thinking, I mean, I think the only thing I would want to add is it's, your, it's up to you ultimately how much you want to do with medical, right? And so a story, we had a patient, he did have medical coverage. And so we submitted documents for him and they denied it, right? And he was referred from a physician, all of those things, everything was checked off and they kept giving him the runaround and he kept push and we were like, we just can't do anything more. Like we don't, we don't have the manpower. We didn't have enough people at the front desk to do the dental and to constantly run after the medical part, right? And he came back a year later, but he had paid us upfront, right? He came back a year later um, for his annual checkup on his sleep appliance. And he was like, hey, I got paid. It was a year later, but I got paid because I kept pushing them and pushing them. So it also is, you can help your patient. You can charge them, collect your full fee, work with a medical billing company like GoGo, um, you know, and have them do all the submitting and get help your patient get paid or you can give the packet of letters and stuff tell your patient go or you could keep trying to fight the medical insurance company but it's what you want to take on in yeah. your office you've got totally the whole freedom to make that choice yeah. and not get stuck into the into the mire of it yep you are still in control even if it feels like chaos yeah. Don't ever forget that. This is your practice for a reason. Team, if you're on here trying to figure out medical billing, Lori, you asked a great question earlier. If you're here sitting here going, bam, oh my gosh, I'm getting hit, I'm getting hit, I'm getting hit. Take a step back from that and have a real conversation with a doctor and say, listen, how much do we want to do this? We're, we're all in. Do we need help from an outside company? Do we need some training? Do we need better documentation? I mean, what is it that you need? Don't keep hitting the same wall thinking that the wall's going to move because yeah. the wall's making money every time you hit it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. So I want to, we have a bunch more questions, like not 25. We have a bunch more. Um, we'll stay here until those are answered, but I do want to show a couple of slides for those of you guys that do have to leave. I promise to show you the discount on the the course stuff, and I can't talk and do things at once. <laughs> All right. Am I actually showing my screen? Yes. Yes, there we go, right? You guys can see it? 
Cool. Okay. Um, so here's the deal, guys. This is very specific. So if you can hear me on this, it's a $200 discount for the course. There's a couple of very specific things you need to know about this. Number one, that course fee right there represents the doctor plus four people. So that's five total people attending a two-day virtual course on Zoom. So it's a video call, like everybody has a mic and a camera, highly interactive. Mostly you get to hang out with Mona again, but this is our course that we do once a month, two days, virtual, live, in person, uh, in person, virtual. Can I even say that? Anyway, it's 400 bucks, 14 CEs for each person that attends. That's like $5 a CE. This is probably the cheapest CE you're going to get. So if you want to learn sleep, if you liked what you heard tonight, you love hanging out with us for two days. We'll talk about a seamless workflow, soup to nuts, how you build the package, how you connect to patients, how do you sell the cases, and more importantly, what do you want out of your program? So that is, if there is a sales pitch around the course, it is, we want to teach you how to connect with people, which is verbiage, soft skills, and we want you to walk out with an action plan because learning and doing nothing is pointless. We just wasted your time if that's what happens. We want you to actually do stuff and help people. That's number one. Boy, that was a mouthful. Number two, we have three spots left for the December course. That's the 10th and the 11th. That's this coming weekend. What are you doing on Saturday? Just kidding. If you want to hang out this weekend, you can use that code. Or if you use the QR code or that website at the bottom of the slide, you can go to the events page on our website until the 20th of this month, 20th of December, you can use the discount on any of our published 2022 courses. Normally we only go with the next course, but we've only got three spots left and that's not fair to you guys. So December, three spots left this weekend, uh, course coming up or the courses coming up in 2022, you can use this discount until the 20th and then it turns off. And we got these fancy QR codes. Look at that, we're in the 21st century, only 21 years late. Anyway. Uh, if you have questions we didn't answer, you want to talk to a coach, get connected with either of these ladies later, you can click this link, click this link, click your screen. It's not going to work. <laughs> Type in the link into your computer, or you can take a picture of this, use a QR code. It'll take you to a calendar where it puts you in touch with one of our sleep coaches. So the, our goal with this is to answer your burning questions. If you feel like you need some dialogue back and forth instead of us just talking at you, this is where to do it. You don't have to pay for this and you don't have to buy anything on these calls. We are legitimately here to help serve you. If there's something that we do that you need, sure, we'll tell you, but we're here to answer you and help you out. There you go. That's the next steps. Pick one or both. We'll answer your questions or we will rally your cage for two days and help you get riled up about doing more sleep cases. All right, last thing is the CE link for those of you that have to bounce. That's a California term for leave. Uh, if you guys need to do that, you're welcome to do so. Uh, the CE link is in the chat and we will email it to you an hour after this ends. So if we're here until midnight answering your burning questions, then it's gonna be there at 1 a.m., okay? One hour after we end tonight, it'll be in your inbox. Otherwise you can click the link in the chat. Now everybody's tired of hearing me talk. So can you all please start talking again? <laughs> Alicia, I got a, a so Stephanie has a burning question for you. Ooh. Will you pretty please tell us which Blue Cross Blue Shield plan pays only $96? <laughs> yes. Um, uh, Vegas. Uh, where's Vegas? In Nevada? Nevada. Blue Cross Blue Shield, Nevada. There's yeah. about a 50% confidence rating on that answer right now. Nevada. <laughs> Blue Cross Blue Shield of Nevada. Yeah, that's it. Seriously, what the crap wow. of all states? Right? I, I, when I first heard it, I was like, oh, pff, nah, that can't be real. That's ridiculous. Nope, it's real. It's so don't get in network, obviously, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at all. Um, there are some plans that, uh, that have you send in, they will not pay unless you send the um, lab bill the lab bill and they'll pay the lab bill fee. Yep. So it's like, that's blue cross blue shield of uh, Tennessee. Yeah. 
Mona. <laughs> I have a question. <laughs> For our expert, Alicia. You know, I was hearing that when you start to um, send to certain insurance companies, you have to actually have the physician write the type of appliance. Ah, yes. That, That's was, a, that was really like... United <laughs> Healthcare, right? Yeah, that was United Healthcare. So that, that kind of came and went. Um, that was United Healthcare's new uh, guidelines for coverage that, yes, the, the physician had to write the type of the type of appliance and list the cost on top of it. Um, and I took the stance of as go, go billing and as an office, I was like, no, I'm going to tell them that's ridiculous. And part of that, that, um, that document said, you know, when applicable. And so, you know, my answer was, well, it's not applicable. When applicable. It's, it's N-A. So I kind of took a stance of, um, you know, this is ridiculous. And other billing companies turned around to their clients and said, so go ahead and get this done. And I thought that was ridiculous. Luckily, the AADSM actually stepped up to the plate and um, confronted United Healthcare and sent them a letter and they removed that. So that's oh, the issue. Right. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Um, so this is not a question that was asked yet, but I have a, now I have a question. What is this, the like host and speaker question time? <laughs> um, this is brand new, I believe, because it hasn't even gone into effect yet, but the Surprise Billing Act Lisa, are you familiar with that? Yes, yes. It doesn't apply to us. It's for hospitals. Got it. Yeah. So the ho hospitals are notorious, as we know, uh, for not disclosing any fees. Um, okay. And again, in dentistry and sleep dentistry, we tell the patients how much we're charging. We're telling what we expect the insurance to pay uh, or if you're, you know, fee for service. So that whole surprise billing, you know, doesn't, doesn't affect us as, as um, private offices, but. You know, hence the importance, the hospital, you hence know, the importance of knowing how to build that package. Right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Learn from Mona. <laughs> Learn from Licia. That's right. Um, okay. So, um, Wanda asks, should sleep appliances be predetermined with health insurance or just sent for payment when finished? Oh gosh, definitely. Ooh. You definitely wanna call and get a benefit check and you wanna find out, um, number one, is it covered? Is it covered benefit on the plan? Number two, does it require pre-authorization? Predetermination is, is kind of, um, you know, it's optional. So if it doesn't require pre-authorization, you can request a predetermination if you like, uh, but typically it does require pre-auth. So you definitely want to find that out in the beginning before you get started. Um, and, you know, what, what are the plan specific requirements, right? So uh, for instance, not to make anybody's brain hurt, but Aetna requires 4% desaturation on the sleep yeah. test. Uh, versus, you know, your Blue Cross Blue Shield or, you know, United Healthcare that will accept the three percent. So you want to find out what those specific in and outs are for for the plan as well. Um, do not just send the claim and hope it pays. You got to find out ahead of time. Wait, we can save then, you the time and effort yeah. of submitting that claim and just tell you it doesn't. Don't no, worry about it. it. Yeah, and if it denies for not being pre off. Um, you know, sometimes you can get a retro off, but not very often. They'll, they're going to hang their hat on that. Mm -hmm. and, yep. Yeah. Um, so question, is it legal in all 50 states? It's funny. <laughs> George, <laughs> always asking, is it legal in all 50 states? You only practice in one state, George. We know where you're at. Is it legal in all states to have the patient pay you and then have the check sent to the patient? for both PPO and Medicare. Absolutely. If, if you're not in network, it's your money to collect and it's their insurance. So absolutely 100%. It is not illegal to get paid and have them get paid by their insurance. If you are in network, I don't even think it's illegal. It's against your contract with the insurance company. So if you have an in-network contract where you've agreed to accept the insurance payment and per that contract, 
um, you're not even supposed to collect the deductible because who's to say it's owed to you until the claim is processed. Um, so that's, oh. that's the kicker. So how do you become in network with medical insurance as a general dentist? Maybe I should ask Stacy that. <laughs> <laughs> or her failed office uh, or dental assistant. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the failed dental assistant says, uh, it, it depends on the plan. I have been trying to get into Aetna. I don't want to, but I do it every year just you know, to pretend I'm on the same side as Stacy, and I get that denial letter every year. Aetna won't let us in. Um, they're very closed off. Um, you know, circuit. And if we lied and said we were oral surgeons, which we are not, uh, we could get a contract that would allow $700 that I don't want anyway. So I'm not going to lie. And I don't want $700 allowable. So I can't get into Aetna and I own a medical billing company. Um, Blue Cross Blue Shield, you know, Florida, it's shut out, right? So you're, unless you're grandfathered in, uh, Cigna, you can get in. Uh, Humana for most plans you can get in and United Healthcare, they used to not let anybody in and now uh, you can. And again, the allowed amounts typically quite low, but um, you know, again, just depending on, on your patient base and what you're looking at, some, some offices find it um, reasonable. Uh, and that's the one that Stacy and I butt heads the most about. Um, so we're in the process of trying to get in network with United Healthcare and it, our first, um, Try got denied because she let her DEA license go. Um, so I was like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> "You forgot to remind her. That's what it was." Right? No, she was like, no, <laughs> no, "Just kidding." <laughs> I'm not doing it. I was like, "Okay." <laughs> uh, so she got somebody else who said that we could use their DEA. So I'm gonna try again. Um, Ooh, but you know, sometimes they just they won't let you in yeah. um, because because it's full. So I have a question about that too. And I know that we want to get off, but really quick, but here's the thing. When I was doing sleep medicine in Pennsylvania, I was approached by a company to go under contract with them and I would have to pay them 10,000 to, they initially 10,000, but then they took it down to 6,000 to be working under their umbrella. And I would be now in network, network with everyone, but then they would keep 25% of the fee that was paid. Mm -hmm. and you said no of course I'm like that's bullshit <laughs> are you no. kidding me I'm like no <laughs> you're not getting 25 no. percent 25 percent of 96 dollars is a lot well it's a lot I had I had two kids to feed <laughs> Lisa. Yeah. um you know I I don't Listen, I'm Licia from Gogo -Go Billing, and I and I and I can't lie. I'm going to tell you what I feel. I think those are illegal. I really and, mm, and I hate to I say thought. things like that, but to to me, it just doesn't make sense. And I'll, I'll I'll give you one small reason why. For instance, Blue Cross Blue Shield, right? The way Blue Cross Blue Shield works is you bill your home plan. So that means if somebody walks in my office and they have Blue Cross Blue Shield of Texas because their company's based out of Texas, I don't send the claim to Texas and Texas Blue Cross Blue Shield out of their money pays it. I send it to Blue Cross Blue Shield of Arizona because that's where the service is being performed. Oh, got it. Right? With those um, umbrella companies, um, for instance, they bill Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois because they have a really great allowed amount. So you've got dentists in... Texas and North Carolina and all over the country billing saying that you know the place of service was in Illinois and I don't see why Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois would like to pay for claims nationwide for all these dentists so to me it just doesn't add up and I I would not ever suggest anybody get involved with any yep. of that type of thing. I You're thought it was a bit dodgy right. so I didn't yeah you're assigning your provider rights to a company to bill on your behalf. Yeah, if you wouldn't do it in dentistry, maybe we shouldn't do it for medical billing. But hey, here's a quick fun fact for those of you that still are on here and you want a nugget. When you look at an insurance card, oh, can you see it? Yes, you see the PPO yes. in a suitcase. 
The suitcase means they can take it wherever they go. And it's called the blue card program. And it means exactly what Licia just said. You can go out of state and bill through your local plan and use out of, and get out of state coverage. That's all it means for that patient. Mm -hmm. right. So there you go. There, there's my contribution for the whole night. <laughs> oh, you had many. You had many. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. This one's Ramona. Um, kind of two questions combined. Um, why wouldn't you just always collect the whole fee up front? Tell the patient whatever the insurance company pays is gravy. I, I think we're talking about billing unassigned, meaning you collect yeah. the fee up front, but you're yeah. doing the billing for them similar to what you did. Yeah. And um, they yeah. asked, how do you how do you determine your fee? We can't set your fees, but we discussed that in the course. But go ahead with those two, Mona. I mean, no, that's that's a great question. And that's what we we did. Um, we would absolutely collect everything up front. We would um, present our package, our private fee, and then we would go ahead and work with a billing company to see if there's any medical coverage um, that was available. Um, on the front, on the end of that, though, we would have to, we would, without really making a big deal of it, verify benefits and pre-op if we needed to, so that we knew at the time of the financial conversation that we can say that. Let's look at your insurance benefits, right? Um, and then, you know, if they got the check, great. Um, you know, and if we got the check, uh, it, we'd write a refund. Um, setting your fees, I just went middle of the road. Um, I wanted to be, I knew when I went, so when I first started four years ago, um, I was told by a lot of uh, different people, when you build a medical, bill high, and then if you're doing it privately, bill low. And I really, really hate that because number one, it felt really weird and, and not right. Like how could you bill the insurance company for 6,500, but then if they're not gonna cover it, you bill 3,500. It was just weird. And how do you explain that to a patient when they ask you? And then secondly, it was like a nightmare to even track the numbers in your dental software and what was covered and what was not. So I just went with the middle of the road fee in my area. And, and that's how, you know, you, you do some research, but there's a better way to set fees. And we teach that on our course. <laughs> But there's, you know, you have to take so much into account your time. Time is your currency, right? Um, how much time you're spending on it, your lab fees and all of those things. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Um, Alicia, mm -hmm. how do you become an out-of-network provider for TRICARE? Okay, so TRICARE is kind of like Medicare. It's a, it's a government um it's a government program and you have to sign up in your jurisdiction as a non-participating provider. So you can, you can be participating or non-participating. It's the same, same kind of thing um, with TRICARE. So, um, you know, I, I don't have like, this is the website and this is how you do it. I hire people who are smarter than me to handle that. Um, but we do offer that as a service. Uh, but if you just wanna Google TRICARE, your state, um, and then it's a non, non-participating provider. Uh, and it's just an application. It's really not that difficult. Um, and you send that one and it's not like Medicare. You don't have to get fingerprinted and pay a fee. It's, it's actually easier than Medicare. Got it. Cool. Um, here's a clinical one. Um, this, uh, Lydia has a patient that has CPAP. Um, their AHI is 54. How do we get Medicare to approve this patient for oral appliance? So is, uh, is the patient um, non-compliant or did they fail CPAP or did um, they do dual therapy? Can we yes. That? that wasn't in the question, so okay. why did you do both? <laughs> I'll wing it. Okay, so basically the way Medicare works mm -hmm. is there's something called same and similar and it's jurisdiction uh, specific. So in my jurisdiction, it's, it's a thing. Uh, if the patient has had a CPAP billed to Medicare within five years, it's RUL, reasonable um, use lifetime, within five years, your claim will automatically be denied um, and you can appeal it. So to appeal it, you have to prove that the patient uh, has had a sleep study within a year. Um, you have to have a face-to-face -face with their sleep physician or their primary care, whoever is managing their sleep, um, and give a compelling reason. This is 
literally what it says. They're looking for a compelling reason for the CPAP failure. So, um, you know, I don't want to travel to Boca Raton. It's a pain to get in the airplane. That's not going to work. Or at least walk on my face, it drives me nuts. That's not going to work. You have to have eye infections. You have to have sinus infections. You have to unconsciously remove it in the middle of the night. Um, so make sure they go to that physician and they complain uh, and they, they don't, you know, say things like, oh, it's just hard for me to travel. I don't know why I always have accents when they talk. I, yeah, why, why, did, why did you mock Mona's Boca Raton accent? Like, it's not cool. You can fly to Boca Raton. You can pay for your appliance. Um, so, so basically you have to prove, you know, this compelling reason has to be documented and the physician has to take them off of CPAP yep. and order the appliance as replacement therapy. They have to return that CPAP machine if they don't own it. So after 12 months, they own it. They don't have to, if it's under 12 months, they have to return it to the CPAP company. They have to cancel all recurring uh, mask nice. and tube orders and have an actual uh, receipt return receipt for that um, have them sign an ABN form where you inform them that you are expecting that claim to deny and they have to check mark yes I want you to bill Medicare but we do want to appeal um, and you know if it's not paid I'm responsible so definitely have to sign the ABN and then if you're going to take over the appeal process have them sign what's called an AOR which is giving uh, you permission to appeal on their behalf mm -hmm. um, so if you have all of those things yes you can appeal it we're very <laughs> successful uh, like I said we do get paid quite a bit for our Medicare patients so to me it's worth the fight if I've got a good solid case um, and that other one, dual therapy, if you have a really good documented uh, dual therapy, I just got one through second appeal um, approved with a telemedicine, um, you know, not telemedicine, with a, um, you know, phone, a phone call with Medicare. Peer to peer. Uh, they did approve yeah. uh, a really well documented dual therapy. Got it. Cool. Uh, Jennifer asked the question. Are there companies out there that will do medical billing on a case-by-case -case basis versus paying a monthly fee for the company? I don't have cases every month, so it's not cost-effective for me to pay a company on a monthly basis. Lisey, I know you could talk circles around this, but I want to take it real quick. Um, there are so many sleep apnea patients that are either intolerant to CPAP or not diagnosed. I would say that's both a screening opportunity to figure out how to screen more or how to have more discussions with sleep apnea cases. Maybe that's an internal workflow where the whole team could get on board and have more people. Um, so that's one component. That's not quite the question you asked, Jennifer, but I think that's it, it's very applicable here. Um, separate from that, I would say when you're evaluating the medical billing partner that you want to use, they are a partner in the process of obtaining payment. And I wouldn't want to shortchange that based on a monthly fee. Now, granted, you're not going to be paying $500 to $1,000 a month on a regular basis when you have no cases. But if we're talking about a minimal monthly fee to do the base services of like benefit checks or things like that, that's very common. I would hate to see you pick the wrong partner because they just didn't have a monthly fee. So just, just to put it in those terms, I, I'd be careful because you might waste more time and money on the wrong partner. So I'd, I'd really focus on the screening efforts is my two cents. Yeah. And, you know, we do have a, I don't know of any, any billing offices that, that don't have a monthly fee. We do. It's $95 a month. So it's basically a tip to the grocery store for dinner for the night. And uh, we do unlimited benefit checks. So just like um, Michael said, you know, we have some offices that send us 30 benefit checks a month, you know, and only two go through, but you know, they're getting those, those wheels turning and going. So 100% um, it's worth its weight in gold, I think. Cool. All right. That was a lot. <laughs> like, did I check everywhere that we had questions? Are we sure we got all of them? And I'm pretty confident that we did. Um, 
And just about everyone is still here, which is Amazing. miraculous. Um, you must be entertaining them. <laughs> they definitely like you all, that's for sure. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll ask one parting question. Um, if you have one other nugget that each of you wants to drop before we exit, what is it? I Please do. do. I have one nugget. You only get one. I know. And I'll Take make two, it we'll cut you off. No. Okay. <laughs> when we started doing sleep, Stacey and I working together in her general practice, uh, I was afraid, like Mona said, I was afraid to say the wrong thing about insurance. I wanted to make sure it was going to get approved. Um, and so the patient would get all excited. They're ready to move forward. And I would say, okay, now hold on. Go home. I'm going to start working with your insurance company and 15 to 30 days, we'll call you once it's approved and you can come back and get started. And when we decided that that was a bad idea uh, and we said, you know what, you're ready to go. Let's go ahead and take your impressions and move forward. And, you know, they said yes, and they paid their portion and we moved forward that same day. Our case acceptance, you know, went from 50 to a hundred, it just overnight. Um, and even to this day, I mean, we have it in the schedule where if they're walking in the door, we're getting impressions on them. Even if I have to get a gap approved, I say, let's do what, go ahead and take your scans. And if you want, we can send it out and get the ball rolling and you agree to pay if they deny it, or we can even just hold on to those scans. So that's, that's my nugget. Don't send the patient away when they're ready to go because time is money. It's a pain to get into the office. People are busy. Don't do it. Take advantage and take those scans the same day. Cool. Mona. Nugget over. And my nugget is um, trust your team. This is a team driven process. Trust your team, train your team because that's how you can become successful. If you're starting off with a restorative, converting, or not even converting, but you're gonna do restorative and sleep side by side. You're doing implant cases and you wanna make sure that your patient's in the right appliance after you've restored them. You want to put in a, a dental sleep program that doesn't take your time away. And that means training your team and trusting your team and setting up processes and protocols and having a partner be it with billing, be it with coaching, be it with sleep testing, you got to, you know, really trust your team on that. So um, I could say much more, but I mean. <laughs> Y'all have so many nuggets. Like we should just you know, have a webinar you know. of nuggets. That's, That's right. <laughs> Chad, I need a nugget webinar. <clears throat> oh my gosh. <laughs> that would go over like a bomb. Anyway, um, I'll, I'll, I'll give my two cents and uh, let everybody get out of here. Um, find the people that align with you. Like, I know that sounds like a Hallmark card, but all of us actually know this. We just fake it like it's all about business and workflows and details when it's really not. You're, you're in the business of treating people and people are messy and they're complicated and they're difficult to talk to. And you're going to hit hurdles like that. If you can align with people that are like-minded with you, and you think the way that they think, those are the folks that you want to teach you how to do better work. So if you're picking coaches in any capacity, our course, medical billing, it doesn't matter, whatever that thing is, pick people that are aligned with you and you will not regret that. If you're not aligned, walk, don't waste your money because all you're gonna have is friction. <laughs> you're paying somebody to have friction. Like if you need to fight that bad, it probably costs you less to go somewhere else. But I, you as a client. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's for that. <laughs> Alignment. And, and in that vein, if you're frustrated, a bunch of you raise your hands tonight. If you're frustrated, give yourself the time or the, the distance to step back a couple of steps and just assess where you're at. If it's pausing medical billing, if it's going deeper and working with a company, if it's saying, you know what, I'm just going to do sleep and I'm make a business decision that aligns with who you are and how you care for people and lean into that mm -hmm. and just go and, and be willing to make mistakes because we all make them. And the better part is when we have the right people aligned with us, it's easier to recover from those mistakes, but we all make them still. 
I mean, look at Lacey for crying out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh my God. $96 Blue Cross Blue Shield. I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, serious guys, all joking aside, uh, if, if there's something that any of us can do to be there for you on that journey, we'd love to be that. Um, use those QR codes, schedule a coach, uh, a coaching call, something. We'll get you in touch with the right people. So that's it. Ladies, thank you. You're Always a pleasure. And this was wild as expected. <laughs> Less confrontational than expected, but I oh. had a blast at least. I don't know about you. I, I love Licia. She's amazing. <laughs> I love Lorna. She's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel loved at all. We but love I'm okay you too, with that. Michael. <laughs> no, thank you both. Absolutely. Uh, we will, hey, let's do that repeat. Let's do it in six months. We'll come back and see who was right. Yep. I, I'm here oh, for you. Be good. We're, we're going all in with that. So I'd love Maybe to Mona you. could host that one. I'll so host it. Stacy, come on. Oh, and I'm that would be popcorn. awesome. As it goes. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. popcorn. Yes. For a battle. <laughs> all right yes. well we appreciate you all and the two of you thank you for bringing oh, your humble good. expertise You're tonight welcome. Yep. Bye. have a good night all right. bye everybody bye thank you